Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining our webinar on Quick Tag. Um, today we have Mary Miller and Sean Fitzgerald presenting, so a huge thank you to them for being here today. A couple of things to go over before we get started. This is being recorded, so um, I will be sending that out to you within the next few days. And also, if you have any questions, please type those out in the questions or chat windows, and then we will read those loud at the end. And with that being said, I will hand things over to you, Mary. Excellent. Thanks, Allie. We're super excited to be here. And as Allie mentioned, my name is Mary Miller. I'm joined by my colleague, Sean Fitzgerald. Good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Great Excellent. to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely, absolutely. We're excited that you've all taken some time to spend with us today. And we're going to focus on uh, quick expense, which is reimbursable and corporate credit card expense management. And we're going to give you that, uh, you know, the bonus of the foundation of QuickTag, which is our document management platform. So we're going to highlight these solutions in Dynamics GP. And we will give you a demonstration, a little bit of background, and then a demonstration of what those uh, solutions look and feel like and how they work um, and how we can adapt them to to your environment. So that's the, the topic for today's uh, session. And we've already introduced ourselves, but you know, Sean would be upset if I didn't put the slides here with the pictures. <laughs> um, but so Soon as I mentioned, I'm Mary Miller. I manage, I, know, <laughs> I manage our marketing and, and channel yeah. programs and, and Sean can introduce himself and tell you a little bit about what he does here as well. Yeah, so I'm Senior Partner Account Manager, uh, been here with QuickTag over eight years, almost nine, Mary, it's going to be nine I mean, in August. Crazy. Time is fine, but uh, yeah. been a, uh, we do things here at QuickTag, really according to partner, we do a lot with our partners, and I've been the partner uh, representative for the TM Group for quite some time, so I may have met some of you at former, you know, past vision events uh, or different things that we do around the industry, so it's great to be with you this morning. Excellent, excellent, thanks, Sean. So, our agenda for today, Sean and I are going to keep our cameras on just to kind of do a little bit of intro here and walk through the agenda. Once we get into the content and the demonstration, we'll turn those off to maximize your screen real estate and to preserve our own Wi-Fi bandwidth, as the case may be as well. Uh, but here's what we're going to talk about. We're going to look a little bit at the challenges in the industry surrounding expense management, the processes that are really affected, and ultimately the costs of doing those things manually today, as, as many of you might be dealing with um, in your current business environments. We're going to look at some industry benchmarks and some data that might support you building a business case because we know that that's an important thing for, uh, for each of you and your organizations as you have to share these kinds of uh, solutions and the needs for this type of solution uh, with upper management and others on your team as well. And then we're going to dive into the demo and that demo will begin with quick expense and then conclude with document management. So we have a lot to cover and not a lot of time to do it. So we're not going to, um, we're not going to spend much time on, on the intro here then, but we'll share some benefits and use cases along the way as well. And as Allie mentioned, definitely submit questions in that question box in your go to webinar panel. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn my webcam off so that we can focus on the slides. And uh, Sean and I will uh, probably turn those back on at the end when there's time for Q&A as well. So without further ado, driving into this content and this setup of the challenges in the industry, right, we're going to look at how many uh, expense reports does your organization uh, process each month. Now, it's important to consider that the data suggests that a third of organizations process at least 1,000 expense reports monthly. As you can see from this graph though, companies of different shapes and sizes might be at different points on this graph, right? You might only process one to 99 uh, expense reports as 22% of the companies that responded to this research survey uh, said that they do. And again, you can see that it varies the larger the organization, um, the, the fewer of them are in that kind of category. So right there in, in kind of that mid-market, the 28%, 17%, 19%, right in that 100 to 5,000 expense reports per month range. That's that's probably what you would expect in, in your organizations or expect to see kind of in the industry that we serve. And organizations with higher volume tend to automate both the travel booking and the expense reporting process. However, for the most part, our discussion today is going to focus on the expense report aspect of that. So it's also important to consider how organizations, how are you today in your company submitting expense reports? So industry data, again, we, we partner with a company called Level Research. They're the source for, for a lot of this content, a lot of this data, um, and they, they, they cover a lot of different 
uh, companies and industries, but they focus very specifically on the processes surrounding financial and operational systems and areas in the what's called the purchase to pay. So accounts payable, expense management, all of those very financially intense uh, areas of your business. So this data is very relevant for the operational processes that we're focusing on today. So um, we look at what is the submission uh, method, the primary submission method. Well, we've come a long way. I'm happy to say that 39% of organizations responded that they are using some sort of travel and expense management tool or software. But the sad part is that those middle couple of, of uh, lines there, spreadsheets, scanned receipts, expense management application, um, are still, nearly a third are still man managing paper receipts, 11% paper receipts are mailed to the AP department. So you add those two together and it's still a third of organizations are processing expense reports manually. But look at that middle one, expense management application included in our ERP. Now, GP we know doesn't have a built-in expense management system, but I think what you're gonna see in the solution we show you in Quick Expense, it's very much like it lives and breathes and connects so uh, deeply with GP that it's like it's in the system from an accounting standpoint and super easy to use for your expense submitters as well. So take these things into account as you look at the trends in the industry as organizations are starting to adopt more and more uh, software to handle this. But again, about a third of organizations still are using spreadsheets and paper receipts. And that's what we'd like to see uh, become more automated and of course, more, more digital. So what happens with those expense reports once they do get submitted? Well, by and large, you can see that the employee's direct manager is still by far the number one source for approval. And frankly, um, they have visibility into their team, right? Their budget. But what's interesting here is that the accounting department and, and designated travel managers might have greater visibility into the overall travel spend expense management so that they might be able to easy, more easily spot you know, trends or things that might be discrepancies and have really a greater exposure to how the overall expense um, and travel budgets are being allocated, how those things are broken down. So, but what's important to note here with the employees direct managers being the ones responsible, we want to make it easy for them, right? These business department heads are also managing budgets and production and other services, perhaps a consulting arm, a team of people, right? Expense management is an administrative task that they have to handle and it can be very detailed. There's a lot of data there. So we want to make it easy for them because they're the ones ultimately responsible for approving the expense reports for those members of their team. Again, you might be able to relate to this. It's very common in many organizations, as you can see. So when organizations start to look at automating this process that, that was on paper and receipts and, and Excel spreadsheets and all things like that, when they start to move to a digital automated system, which of course, Quick Expenses is, is a solution that accomplishes that for you. Um, what are some of the benefits that they see? And, and by in the converse, right, you could look at this as, as the challenges that they were faced with before they began to automate. So you could look at this kind of from both sides of that coin. But once you put a solution in place, what are some of the benefits? Certainly communication and visibility are at the top of this list. Increased communications about travel and expense processes, policies, spending. I mean, right now, right, if you've got a pile of receipts sitting on your desk, Sean's working at home, I'm working at home. If I've got receipts and Sean's my manager, he doesn't know if I've included everything. He doesn't have any visibility when I send it in, put it in the mail and, and hope it gets to the right place across the, you know, across town in some cases across the country, right? So there's that visibility aspect that as soon as you make your receipts and expense reports digital, it makes them easier to track and you have greater visibility. So obviously that automation is going to not only improve the communication about the data and the process, but also between the staff so that everybody, the right people have visibility into expense data. So, and of course you can see some, some other reasons as well, you know, decreasing manual processes and, and things like that. So we're gonna look at communication and visibility as really key components in why you would move to an automated and digital expense management solution. Now, 
this breaks down, friends, to some hard costs. Again, if you're building a business case, I encourage you to capture these numbers. The data suggests that when you pull all of the time that it takes to gather up paper receipts for the person submitting it, put all of that data into a spreadsheet, check and double check it, right? It's like Santa's list, check, you know, making a list and checking it twice. Well, this is because this has to tie either to a corporate credit card statement or you've spent your own money and you want to get reimbursed. You want to make sure it's right. So there's a lot of detail that goes into that. You want to make sure you don't miss anything. Then it's got to be sent to whatever manager is responsible for approving. And then ultimately it's got to get to accounting. And then God forbid there's a problem or a mistake, it's got to come back and start that process all over. The cost of that, friends, is $26.60 on average per expense report when done manually through all those steps that we just described. So you know how many expense reports you process in your organization. I kind of picked an average number here of 300. That can add up to about $8,000 a month. So when you look at over time how this adds up, you really need to be aware of there are hard costs associated with this. And so it's not just the time and the visibility and the communication, but there's real dollars and cents that your organization can save if they look at going uh, digital with an automated system to handle their expenses. Now at QuickTag, we are a document management platform at our core, but we also have extended that solution to become the one system. And as I mentioned before, very, very extensively integrated into Dynamics GP. So one system for any business process. You don't want to have to go buy an application for this and an application for that, AP and expense management perhaps being the most common ones that we see that people need to look for automation solutions, particularly in the finance department, right? You want to be able to capture your documents, in this case receipts and expense reports digitally. You want a solution that's going to be integrated with Dynamics GP and you want that process to be automated so that all the right people have access to the receipts and the expense reports and the financial transactions for that process from end to end at any point in the process. So that's what Sean's going to demonstrate for you. But before we do that, a just quick look at <clears throat> where QuickTag is from a solution and an integration standpoint. Now I highlight this because some organizations in the industry, especially Dynamics users right now, are looking at, okay, I'm on GP today, but I might be considering something else for the future. Now, maybe that's you, maybe it's not, but just so that you're aware, as I mentioned, quick tag document management as the foundation, the core of our solution, it goes across all of the Dynamics ERP systems, right? 365 Business Central, Finance, SL, Nav, and AX. Document management, very extensively integrated to all of them. And then the top level, of course, are the versions that our latest release supports. So but what we're going to focus specifically on today is the GP, the column, the first, then the first column here, Dynamics GP integrations. So from a document management standpoint, Sean's going to demonstrate that for you after he creates uh, the expense reports in GP using Quick Expense. And we also have an AP automation solution called Quick Payables. And our solution for GP can also be hosted in the cloud if that's the direction that your organization is heading as well. But at the bottom of that list and where we're going to focus uh, the beginning of this conversation and the demonstration today is specifically within Quick Expense. So with that background as sort of context for this, I am going to turn the presentation over to Sean so that he can um, begin the demonstration of Quick Expense and the QuickTag document management platform. Okay. Mary, were you going to show something first or am I going to start? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, no, you're right. Absolutely. I'm going to do that. <laughs> Sorry about it, folks. Um, can you send it back to me? <laughs> or can sure, I Sure, you bet. Uh, uh, I didn't accept it yet. There you go. So yeah, I was I was thinking that somehow you were going to show that, but I need to show the mobile app first. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Let me, let me uh, get to that. And you know, I was thinking, Mary, when you know we titled this, we talked about this uh, as being for expense, and you've clearly made the point now through your PowerPoint. But um, you know, a lot of times over my experience talking with people, sometimes people kind of lump expense. You know, they they lump invoices into that whole conversation of just a general you know, umbrella of expense, right? And mm -hmm. for us, and Mary just mentioned it there too, a minute ago, we also have an AP audit 
you know, solution and common terms here, just to, for delineation in quick tag speak, um, and I think really in GP language, um, when we say AP automation, we're really obviously referring to accounts payable and we're talking about vendors. We mean invoices, invoices that come in from vendors who you have to pay back, right? And when we say expense, we're talking obviously now you know about employee expense, right? And uh, as Mary just got done talking about. So just, you know, delineation of terms and so we keep things straight. Because um, as she just said, I'm going to take us through, I'm going to start with an employee expense uh, reporting tool, really, if you will, management tool, and I'll walk us through that, um, and uh, and we'll start there. Uh, that is going to end my. I say end when I take you guys through the demo and how we flow information. We're gonna start in Quick Tag. We're gonna go into GP, and uh, as I take us through all of that, um, you know, we're gonna end in GP. Then I'm gonna show you how we upload documents attached. That's gonna be the document management part of this. Um, and I'll explain all that when I get into it. Uh, what I won't really go into, because we've done it in, in pr a previous uh, webinar here with the TM group, um, is I won't be going into the invoice solution that we have. Uh, but it, it's it's been around, gosh, it's almost 15 years mature, as I say. I don't like to say old, because we're constantly updating it. In fact, we do, it just went through a major upgrade that came out uh, in May, you know, June 1st, late May, June 1st, and we're really excited about that. So if you haven't seen what we're doing with invoices lately, you should take another look. If uh, and then, um, and then again today, we'll focus on uh, our other most common solution that we have, which is, uh, which is, you know, again the expense management solution. So. So there's you know different ways to get uh, invoices into into QuickTag. Receipts in uh, this case, but yeah. Excuse me, thank you. <laughs> I said invoices, uh, but yeah, right. Re uh, in, uh, receipts. So Mary's going to show you how we do that uh, with an app uh, on her phone. So Mary, are you ready to go mm -hmm. down that road or? I think so. Um, I've got a little bit of a Wi-Fi lag. It looks like here, but um, I'll do my best to to see if this if this is going to display for us here properly. I think it's just taking a little bit of time. Um, I'm trying to get that screen to disappear from the, from the front of that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah. Um, just give it a second to catch up here. But what I'm sure. showing is is the mobile app. It's kind of behind behind that view here. Let me see if I can just uh, maybe pull it well, on Well, you top. know, you can. Like, it, Mary's going to show how we do it through the app uh, if it cooperates with us, the screen sharing mm -hmm. thing there. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you can also just email uh, invoices in as well. So the bottom line is you take your phone out, uh, you know, and take a picture of a receipt. Now, clearly when we say that, we're talking about a receipt that someone would hand to you, what I call a point of sale receipt, right? Mm -hmm. I think about anywhere you might be, like at a, you know, easy example is you're traveling through an airport, you stop for a cup of coffee at a Starbucks or something, they hand you the receipt, you take out your phone and you snap a picture and you send it to QuickTag. There's mm -hmm. two ways you can do that, through the app, uh, that Mary has on her screen, that she's, uh, or just attach it to an email and send it in too. Um, mm -hmm. Either way is is going to work. So sounds like maybe you, uh, looks like maybe the the app the uh, your Wi-Fi is not. Yeah, the, the Wi-Fi yeah, doesn't really want to cooperate. cooperate. But here's what we'll yeah. do, Sean. When you pull up the the screen in Quick Expense, I'll just take a picture in the app and I'll show how it's going to show up right there on your screen. So let's oh, just, take a just look do at it that. live. Okay. We'll do it live. There you go. So if you even refresh All that right. view right there, I just added some data about those receipts at the bottom of that list there. You can refresh and okay. you'll see that. And oh, yeah, then breakfast. Yeah. All right. There you go. And then you. let me okay. just take. I'll take a picture here of this new receipt. We're going to yeah, use the so, photo. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, no, so we're in Mary's queue. Um, if you look in the top right hand corner here, I'm gonna hover over the little orange the dot that's now orange MM Mary Miller, and you can see document owner Mary. So I'm we're on we're on my demo system now, but I logged in here as Mary so you could see it. And this is just a we call it a queue, a work queue. This is your bucket, if you will, for where you collect your invoices over the course of the reporting period. Most people do them once a month. You can do them as often as you'd like. Some people do them uh, once, a, uh, once a week. Um, we don't charge per report, so you can do them as however often you want. Um, and so, so here's Mary's you know, incoming queue of 
receipts that she's collected and the theory will be again we've done this over the last 30 days and it's time to do our expense report and that's where we're at right now so should i refresh this did you send another one in i did it's taken a little bit of time but um we'll, we'll come back to that maybe when you get yeah. to the point of of showing additional sure. receipts as you get sure. them uploaded but yeah yeah, go yeah. Ahead. so so real simple to do this so um so i'm going to transition over here so so we can do things two ways we can do um expense reports for reimbursable expenses so i got out my you know my credit card with my personal credit card with my name on it and uh and used it for some expense and then i need the company to pay me back so reimbursable right um we can do them that way or we can do it with a corporate card which is very very common almost most clients we talk to have some mix of both they usually lean heavier one way or another but it's kind of hard to get away with not having both. So we can handle both, which is great. Um, but I think what we definitely see uh, even more commonly is, is clients that come to us that have a corporate card. And because uh, then there's this whole idea of back office reconciliation that goes with that and getting the, uh, you know, getting it to match up with the American Express card, the Visa, whatever you might have. So that's what I'm going to show you here. So in fact, this is, so I'm logged in as, as Sean here. And you can see this is uh, this is our dashboard view in the top left hand corner. I have receipts in the top right right hand corner. I would have reports if I had any going on. So so this would be the end user dashboard that we have. And then so before I even go to that, though, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you some back office stuff. OK, because with QuickTag um, and I'm going to click on reconcile here um, with with QuickTag. And you know, it's all about helping you guys out in in AP. So if I had, my use case is going to be, we have an American Express card, corporate account, right? And we have, let's just call it 10 people uh, in our company that use this. And so they're using it all month long. It's coming near the end of the month. And we got to reconcile this. I need people to get their expense reports in. Now, my users, like Mary just showed you, take pictures. Uh, or email in, right? A lot of times we get receipts to us. Like if you buy something online, they're going to email you the receipt. Just forward the email and send it in. That's fine. Um, many, it's really easy to get receipts into the queue. That's the simplest part. But I'm going to start here as Sean, the AP guy, okay, in the back office. And I am going to go to my American Express website, my bank website. I'm going to download the consolidated corporate card statement so for all 10 users we'll pretend okay and then i am going to uh i'm just going to upload it right here into quick tag i simply just come here i click on new statement upload american express statement i'm going to click on the add files box there and i'm really just browsing out and uploading now i don't have one to actually upload but if i did and it was sitting on my desktop i would just double click on it probably an excel file or a csv file and what it does is it just imports all the data right away, right? I put a start date and end date if I want. You determine what fields of information you want here. And I upload and, it, and bring the document in. I'm done, that's it. That's all I have to do. What does QuickTag do? Well, QuickTag loads that into the system for you. Now, I have some demo limitations here. Um, and so I'm just seeing one user at a time, but really the AP person in, in, if you were to buy QuickTag and you're the AP person, real world, your view wouldn't be just one person. You'd see all your employees on this, on this screen right here. So back to my example, if I had 10 employees and we all had three transactions, I'd see 30 lines here instead of just three. Okay. Um, so what it does is it loads all of the transactional data from your corporate statement into QuickTag for you, okay? So let's think about what's happened. The end user is accumulating the receipts over time. AP has just uploaded all the transactional data, right, in one report. And then all we have to do is match the two, okay? Now, we haven't done that yet, so this says missing receipts. Sean has three missing receipts. Well, it's a little misleading his receipts are actually in QuickTag. They're just not matched yet. And when they're matched, this probably should say unmatched. Uh, and that's really what's more going on here. So, so now a really great thing happens too when you upload that statement the first time. Every user will get an email letting them know that their, 
expense report data has been uploaded. Okay, that email automatically gets kicked out. I'm gonna force mine. I'm gonna hit, I just clicked send missing receipts report. And you can come in here and force it anytime you want, but automatically it goes out to everybody the first time. So what just happened? Everybody, all 10 employees just got an email that essentially uh, notifies them that it's, they can go ahead and match their receipts. Right, that's that's what really what happens here. So Sean, department manager, is going to get that email in just a second, and uh, he can go in and upload things. Okay. So let's. I'm going to click over here now to a different instance of QuickTag, top right hand corner in orange dot sm. Sean manager. That's the guy that's got to do his report. There's the email that I talked about. Let's click on the email and see what that looks like. The June Amex Sean expense report for Sean manager is available, but it has missing receipts. Again, this is, that can, that message can say whatever you want, you want it to, but this is telling me, hey, Sean, your information, again, it was loaded into the system, go match your receipts. I click login and what happens? I come right here, I land in this spot. Okay, so you can see I have three incomplete receipts. So I'm, again, I'm the end user guy. I know we're bouncing around a little bit between AP and end user. I'm end user guy right now. So I'm the employee and there's my three receipts. I got something with uh, an airline. I got, looks like a meal and, and I got some kind of Uber ride there going on, okay? So all I have to do is match these receipts as I keep saying to the data. So I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna add the receipt data. I'm gonna choose a payment type of American Express. See, I could do reimbursable, but I'm not. I'm doing American Express. And there's the data, right? The data that's been loaded for me by you in the back office. This is my $300 line item, the top one. I'll double click. It puts in the information for me, $300. Now what airline seats, what doesn't it do? Okay, I guess it the date, of course. What it doesn't do is it doesn't code it for me, <clears throat> okay, automatically. So you can enter the coding right here. And we can do it two ways. We can um, expose the GL codes if you want to click on a list there's all we're integrate we're talking to your GP database right now and so we could pull that whole chart of accounts all your GL codes and and display them right here in a in a pick list that you could filter on real quick and put in the the actual GL code that's fine but I find a very limited number of, of companies that uh, go that route because they say you know what my employees they wouldn't get that right right uh, those guys in sales, they don't know how to do that, right? Like me, they'll get it wrong every time. So, but they do know what department they're in. So let's have them pick department, great, sales. And let's have them pick the expense type. Look, that's got a pretty picture of an airplane. That must be travel. So I can, I can be taught. So I'll click travel and there we go. So what's happening here? Obviously, by those two indicators, sales and travel, it will get coded on the back behind the scenes to the proper GL. Okay. Now, obviously, we work with you guys in AP to build that relationship, uh, you know, in the behind the scenes. But the bottom line is, for the end user, it's very simple: department expense and it's co equals coding, right? That's the end result. So I'll hit add and submit there, and it's really just a repeat of the same thing. I'm going to add my receipt data. This is my $55. Um, I'll click on American Express. And there we go, I only got the two left now, $55, pretty simple, right? Uh, we're gonna make professional services pay for this one just to have something different and we'll do meals and add and submit, okay? And Sean, maybe do before one. you do the last one, you could show us what that view looks uh, like now for AP. I always forget about that, thanks Mary. Yeah. So, so, yeah, well, here's what Mary wants to point out to you. If I refresh this, right? And I come down here and I look at Sean's card again. And I go to pending statements. See, the two I've coded are green and one's red. So again, the real world application of this would be, um, would be, you know, hey, seven of us have done our, our reports, but three haven't. They're all due tomorrow. You come in here as AP, you do a refresh, and you're like, oh, Joe, Sally, and Ed haven't done their reports yet. Now you would send missing receipt report and Joe, Sally, and Ed would all get that email, basically saying, hey, these are due tomorrow, get them done, right? Um, and it may also for, re you know, it may also, you know, be an indicator that, you know, hey, let, let you know, I thought I did all my, you know, expense reports, but all right, all, I thought I did my expense report with all the receipts. I thought I had them all coded, 
maybe I missed one, you know? So it helps, it helps eliminate that as well. Okay, so let's do that last one. We'll go to American Express again. Oop, I didn't do that right, did I, Mary? Click the cancel instead of select the row. Yeah, it's yeah. great for visibility though, what you were just showing there, Sean. I think that, you know, that's one of the key challenges we talked about, right? Is it just, there's no visibility and there isn't a lot of ongoing collaboration. You don't call somebody when you're doing your expense report. So to have that kind of view from the accounting standpoint into exactly what you're submitting here is is a really great, um, great insight that people can have literally at the click of a button. Yeah, yeah. So, um, because, you know, really, yeah, I mean, AP doesn't even know, I mean, they know what's going on, they've uploaded the receipts, but they don't know if I'm doing it or anything right now, right? And, uh, all right, mm -hmm. so I have done, what did I do? I matched all my receipts. I don't have any more to do. I'm gonna click right here and go back to my dashboard because that's gonna take me back here and say, look, I'm on the report side of things uh, for Sean Manager. I do have a report done. How did that happen? Magic, magic. So what happened was quick tag knows Sean manager had three receipts to match. He's matched them because there's no more transactional data left. It knows that it's done. So um, it went ahead and, and prepared the report for me. Okay. Um, and so there you go. And so now I can uh, come in here and hit this and look this up and I can actually see um, my receipts in my report. So I get the header information on the report, $365. Yeah, that sounds about right. Are these the right uh, receipts? Yes, it is. Okay. And so I can see these receipts and, um, and I'm good to go. So now I'm like, yeah, my report's ready to roll. I'll just come in here and hit send for approval. Okay. And so it's gone. I'm done. And so that just sent my report for approval to my boss, which sent it to Sean CFO. So we're gonna click over now to Sean CFO. Let's refresh this so we get an update. And there you go, one expense report pending your review. That's gonna be Sean Department Managers, right? For $365. Um, by the way, Sean CFO is also going to get uh, uh, an email letting him know that there's one to do. Um, and that's going to pop up in, in the email right here. So there it is on cue. Look at that, Mary. Uh, action required. So I could do the approval right here, right? Could pop up right here. Uh, the attached expense report has been routed to you for review and requires your attention. Uh, Sean Manager, $365. There's the breakdown of it and then approve or reject. Um, in case you can't see, it's those big buttons at the bottom. <laughs> uh, nice well, on a mobile phone too, if you get your email on a phone, right? <laughs> exactly, like they're probably much smaller on a mobile phone. I have a big <laughs> screen here on my desk. I'm like, those are giant buttons. Right, <laughs> scales. Enormous. So um, yeah, but literally that's what happens, right? Uh, if you might expect, so many of our users do this on their phone. So. Um, and if the, you're thinking to yourself, okay, I see the transactions, but I don't see the receipts. Where are they? Well, just double click that little attachment. And this is gonna jump you right back online to an, the, an online view of the expense report. Now you don't have to be logged in to see this, right? You don't, you don't have to be logged into QuickTag to see any of this. You just have to you know, have an internet connection and you can, you can see all that. So I can see the actual individual receipts for everything that I wanna review. So then I can just come right back here to my expense report uh, and click the little giant approve button, <laughs> hit send, <laughs> comments are optional and I'm good to go. I can, uh, I can approve it or obviously reject it right there from email, okay? So in terms of- uh, Hey Sean, being before you disappear from that, before you disappear yeah. from that screen really quick, do a quick refresh. I, I was able to submit in the mobile app. I was just having a little oh, bit of a yours? lag when we were. Yeah. Okay. So, so you got nine to... in here right now. Mm -hmm. go ahead and refresh. There you go, we got 10. Yeah. So I just Which added that you? last one. The, one at the bottom? The USCS. This... Yeah, okay, you just put that one in, okay. So immediately just right from the app pops in and we'll rotate it that way. There you go. 
right from you what you were at the uh, UPS store recently oh, back in February. <laughs> so <laughs> very mean, easy to get. <laughs> very right, very easy to get things in uh, and have them drop right into into your queue. Yep. Anyway, back to your okay. CFO story. Sorry. Yeah. So let's approve that. Um, let's go to come back to the dashboard for the expense report, and uh, we'll come right in here and. It's not Mary. It's not rendering for some reason. I don't know why. Just approve it from your uh, from your email. Okay, I don't know if it's set up to approve actually from email. Uh, maybe log out and log back in. Could yeah, just let's be see if that works. Too many different people right now. I don't know if yeah, it doesn't. Like it's like that, you're logged it? in as Mary. You're logged in as Sean. What are you trying right to do there. here? <laughs> right. That's a good idea. Let's cut some of that. Yeah, you can close that other okay. side. So we'll go to quick expense. There's Sean CFO. Yeah, there just need go. to refresh my login. Okay, so what have we done? The AP uploaded everything, right? The end user matched the receipt to the invoice, and now it's time for the approver to get the approval done. Um, and so here we go. So the approver, Sean CFO, logs in. We've already seen this report online, right? One other place before is that same report. So, but this is if you were to look at it inside a quick tag, right? And I can see everything right here in quick tag. Now, what I'm going to do is I can, and if I want to, I can see the receipts there, or I can also just see them right here. A little easier view. Uh, traditional view like we've been seeing throughout the whole demo. And so I can approve right here, approve the entire expense report. But what if I, you know, kind of don't like one of them, right? Um, if I want to come in here, I can approve or reject at the receipt line. So maybe there's one oddball, you know, receipt in here that I don't approve of for some reason. As a manager, I can reject one, but approve all the others. You always have that option in a report. So I'm going to hit, a, but I'm going to go ahead and just approve them. So Sean CFO will approve the expense report and comments are optional. And, uh, and we'll say uh, TMG for TM group, just to kind of keep that unique and keep our eyes on it. Okay, so pretty simple. The end user matched three receipts and the approver approved them. Who doesn't know that the employee has done their expense report? AP. AP is not aware of that. They got their fingers crossed and hoping that they're doing it right. But my point is you don't know that this activity, you haven't seen this yet in AP. Well, let's make sure you see it because where we're gonna where we're gonna put this? This is going into GP, right? Your system of record, financial system of record. You definitely want to put your eyes on it, right? You're not just gonna shove it in based on what a couple of employees did. I know AP people. You're gonna want to see this. So let's go right here into our payables invoice final uh, bucket and um, take a second. Let's refresh that. One more. And uh, payables invoice final. Yeah, so this should, the the the, the uh, report is gonna show up here. It's, it's lagging a little bit. Mary, I think I'm having some internet issues here at home. That's what's going on. Mm -hmm. But uh, but it's gonna come in here and it's gonna drop in. And so what AP is gonna get the chance to do is they're gonna get the chance to come in here. And really what you wanna look at is the coding, right? And I'm gonna give you the ability to view the coding, right? And then to edit the coding. Okay, and that's really what you want to be able to do now. Now you may choose that uh, you don't want to edit it. You just want to send it back. All right, you want to send it back to um, the manager maybe with some comments. There it is. It's just a little slow this morning. So American Express. So we'll hit uh, that. So AP can take a look at this um, and then they can come right here, like I said, and do that edit. Uh, and they can see how things, four codes were selected. How was it coded? And you can come down here and see exactly how it was coded. $300, which one is that? Oh, uh, that's this one, 300, what is that? Boom, you got the receipt, right? So everything is right there for you. You got the coding, you got the amount, you got a view of the receipt. Um, and uh, oh, by the way, too, if you click, now, now, now you can change the code, I should show you that. Okay, so if you don't agree with one of them, no, that's not meals and entertainment, that goes to somewhere else, you can click on that. And if you want to change them at this point, you can, and you just hit this look up here. And remember I said, we're integrated to your GP database in real time and give you the entire chart of accounts, 
okay? So if you wanted to change this to anything else, you could search on it um, by, you know, by description or account number, and it'll take you right to that GL, and you can change anything that you want. So this gives you the ability to, to move on it really quickly. Now, the other thing you could do is reject this and say no, the, you know, the payable to um, whatever, to the payable for meals and entertainment really should be coded to, and then let them know. So you could use that as a training opportunity so they don't keep making the same mistake over and over, but you can just go ahead and change it if you want to. So again, you have the coding in your control there. We're gonna keep everything the same um, and send it on. If I'm curious as to the workflow history on this, um, I can see that as well. I can see, yeah, it just went to corporate AP, um, you know, and it's pending edit right now. So I can go ahead and hit submit, and this will move on, and it's going to go now, it's going to go into GP. So again, we matched, we approved, we got final approval from AP, and now it's going to go into GP. Okay. So all you gotta do is come over here, it's very simple. It becomes a payable transaction entry, right? This becomes a payable to American Express. So just come in here to Quick Tag. We're available embedded right here inside of GP off the additional menu. You're just gonna hit uh, View Work Queue. And you'll probably only come in here once or twice a day, something like that. And here are all of your approved documents, right? Really, really, these aren't just expense reports, minor accommodation of expense reports and invoices, but there's our American Express right in the bottom, $365. So all I have to do is assign this to a batch. I'm gonna hit create, I'm creating the payable transaction entry to American Express, and I can assign it to any of these, which are my open batches, or I can name a batch. Maybe I wanna give it, you know, this is the American Express batch for, with today's date or my initials, and today's date, whatever I want to do. Um, I can create a new batch right now, right here in this little section, okay? I'm just going to go ahead and assign it to the quick, I got my initials, SAF, quick expense. So I'm going to assign it to that batch. I'll hit yes. You'll watch that document leave. There you go. It's gone. So now I'll come here. It's not gone. It's, it's in quick tag, right? So let's navigate to that. There is the SAF quick expense. And there we go. So it created this transaction, gave it a voucher number, vendor ID, all that information is there and defaulted in. SAF quick expenses, the batch, there's today's date, $365, brought in all the GL distributions, right? So it's fully coded. And then if you ever wanna see the actual expense report for ever and always, you'll be able to come in here and say, view documents. So, hey, where's my expense report? Boom, right back online to that online expense report. And yes, as you've already seen, with the actual receipts attached. Okay, so you'll always have that just to click away right from inside of GP. Okay. And Sean, maybe you could show us the other ways to tag right there in GP since you're on that screen. Yeah, so let's transition into the document management. If you've been on webinars with us before, you've seen this, but uh, if you haven't, we wanna make sure you didn't miss this. So remember, if, if you say, hey, listen, that's perfect for me. We have whatever, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, whatever employees, and we need an expense management solution that looks like it'll work. Great. If that's all you think you want and need, great. We'll give that to you. But I can't give it to you without giving you the quick tag document management system. My point is you're going to get this with it, right? Uh, what I'm going to show you now comes automatically with the quick expense solution because there's this, what we call the platform of quick tag underneath all this, which is always gonna be there. So we're embedded in, in GP, and I think Mary may have touched on this at over, gosh, over 75, almost 80 screens in GP. Depends on what you're using, what third-party softwares you might, may or may not have connected. I see it for most clients somewhere around 50 to 60 screens in GP where you can use QuickTag. The point is it's pervasive, it's everywhere. And so we just tag documents. That's what we call uploading a document. So I can do this at all screens in GP where QuickTag is. I'm gonna upload a document. I'm gonna show you a couple different ways. I'm gonna browse, browse out as we call it. I can browse out and grab uh, any 
soft copy document at this point. This is a document that I already have on my desktop, my laptop, my, my, my network somewhere. Um, let's say it's a sales order. I'll just, I'm just grabbing documents, just double click. This is gonna say, do you wanna attach this here? Yes, boom. So now I'm just sitting right here on this same screen to make it simple for us, but so I don't bounce around, but you can go anywhere, vendor cards, uh, people put fixed assets, journal entries, wherever you need to upload documents, you can do that. Now, I also wanna show you, this is one of my favorites, drag and drop. I gotta maneuver my, I'm on one screen here, so I gotta make little, move things around there a little bit, but watch this, I can go tag documents and I can drag and drop anything I want in here. I call this DND for drag and drop. I'll grab this do document. I'm just taking this from here. Yes, up a, I can drag and drop emails into that screen, run out of my email inbox and drop it in, okay? And then lastly, um, what if I have a piece of paper, okay? I can take, um, let's say I had a packing slip, a receiving document of some kind, right? I have a little tag on my desk um, and uh, I can, uh, I'll turn my camera back on real quick so you guys can see it. Uh, for those of you that still have that view available. So these are the tags of QuickTag, right? So I don't have a document in my hands, but if I had, no, here's one. Um, if I had a document, right? And I had, a, you know, this whatever multi-page document, uh, let's say I have two different documents. I got this two pager right here, right? And I wanna scan it in. I'm gonna use these tags. Reg on top of GP, you see a little tag, right? That tag number is the same as this tag number right here. These are my tags registered to me. I take that tag, put it on that document, page one only, set it aside. Here on quick tag, I click OK. That creates a reservation. I do that all the time, right? All day long. And I'm getting a stack of documents all with the tag on page one. When I want to scan, I go to the scanner, I scan. The tag sends that document right to GP where it needs to go, uploads and attaches it right where it's supposed to go. And it also separates the whole stack of documents for us. That's what the tag does. This document goes that way, this document goes that way, that document goes over there. They all go where they need to because of the tag and they get uploaded exactly where they're supposed to be in, in GP. It's really remarkable. Such a time saver. Not, these days, not everybody uses tags, meaning in your organization, but you'll have that one, maybe two people that will use them that will go, wow. What a game changer. That saves me so much time. Okay, so here's, I just did view documents and here they are. Those are the four that I've uploaded, right? Here's the expense report. We've already seen that. And then these are right here. Right? These are turned into, um, these are turned right into PDF. So these were PDFs, but if they weren't, uh, like the scan document will become a PDF. But I can just double click on these and it opens right up. There's my 75 enabled forms for GP. So, um, so you can upload and attach any documents so many different ways. Here's that reservation to be scanned. Like I've already said, when you scan it in QuickTag, it'll turn it into a PDF and attach it here, okay? How are we doing on time, Mary? Do I need to turn it back to you? We're, we're doing pretty well, but maybe you could just show us really quickly then where all those things live in uh, QuickTag yeah, if somebody cool. needed to hop over there and, and find something in, yeah. the, in the digital drawers. Great, so let's go here to drawers. Okay, look, here's mine, my 61. See that little dot there? That means I have 61 drawers. Well, first I have a site and then drawers under the site. Um, and so, and, um, and so you're gonna have a site for your GP companies, right? Mine is Fabricam. Um, here's all the drawers where QuickTag, or all the, really the screens where QuickTag is connected to, these 61 screens. And so there's a corresponding drawer for each one. I'll click the little star and shorten it up to my favorites, payable transaction entry, right? For invoices, that's where these documents went. So if I open that drawer, look at that. Look at the vendor ID, American Express. So here's the Express report. This is where they are, they're in the drawer, right? And here's the other things that we just got done uploading, right? Um, that sales order, this is gonna be that enabled forms doc. Um, and uh, so what's great about this, this gives accessibility to documentation to non-GP people, 
That's the beauty of this. Now you as an AP person can come in here too, utilize the quick tag document management system as powerful search, but you also have that from GP. So the real benefit here is, hey, we have a bunch of people, maybe it's your, uh, all the exp expense report people, right? Who submit an expense report or who approve an expense report. They're not GP people probably. So um, they will have access to their reports, to their receipts right here in quick tag forever. Okay, and any other documentation you want. You're gonna have a document management system, by the way, as I keep saying, build this <laughs> thing out and, and, and attach anything else you want. Put employee documents in here, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, whatever you can think of, marketing, legals, contracts, you can pour, push everything in here. Doesn't even have to be related to GP. That's excellent. Okay, Mary, how's that? That's perfect, Sean. I think we should uh, we should switch back to the to the slides and close out with some benefits and a case study right. and and give people an opportunity to ask some questions. Yeah, so I love it. I love it. So I will. Yep, passing that back to you right now. There you go. Uh, perfect. Okay. Cool. We'll pick up with uh, with where we left off with some slides here. And you know what's what's really great about what Sean just demonstrated, and you know we we can't stress this enough. You can probably tell that we're very passionate about it, in terms of the expense management solution. It receives all of your receipts. It creates expense reports. It routes them automatically for approval. It converts them to invoices. Quick Expense actually takes that expense report and converts it to an invoice, so that AP and the management team in finance has that same level of visibility. Right, really addressing all those challenges and pain points that we talked about before and ultimately as you can see from the screen you're looking at now the benefits of this are is that you're you're actually improving your team's productivity you're decreasing the paper and all of the processing costs you're eliminating a ton of data entry I mean no more manual spreadsheets things are captured digitally and then they stay digital there's certainly no duplicate data entry and then ultimately the time saved for your accounting team, right? We're small teams. We don't have a lot of bandwidth. Typically, you know, two, three people maybe on our AP team are responsible for all of the invoices and expense reports, as Sean uh, mentioned earlier, that, you know, um, a lot of the times those are considered the, the same type of transaction. Why? Because ultimately they wind up as PTEs in GP, just as we demonstrated here today. So hopefully you can see just how much visibility that you and your team could gain from that, eliminate the bottlenecks involved with invoices and expense reports and their approvals and things getting lost along the way. All of those sorts of automation uh, steps that are now going to be handled by Quick Expense and Quick Tag for you really uh, accelerate your processes and increase that visibility that we've talked about. So we're going to share with you a, a customer use case, real world scenario here that um, this customer came to us because we can, you know, tout the benefits all day long. But what really makes it real is when organizations such as yourselves have this type of challenge and then you work with us to to really overcome that. So we're going to share an example here. Creative Solutions in Healthcare is an organization that has uh, more than 100 different locations, sites that need, uh, you know, nursing and, and long-term care and, and other sorts of healthcare facilities. And they had a corporate AP department that managed everything 100% on paper. Now, we started working with them a couple of years ago. And at that time, they were processing about eight to 10,000 invoices per month and then also had about a thousand expense reports per month as well, maybe more by now, Sean. Um, and this is then now they're at 10 to 12. Well, that now was probably several months ago now. So they're now they're even higher than that. So let's just say they're more than 12,000 invoices per month plus expense reports. Okay. They have 14,500 active vendors. Again, probably more than that now. More than 100 different entities, all with invoices and payments and expenses that they needed to manage. And everything was on paper and everything was done manually. So enter quick tag as part of that solution. Sean, maybe you can tell us what they experienced once that happened. Yeah, and I loved hearing um, Diane tell this story, the, their lead project person on this NAP. And she did this for us in a customer session at uh, at Summit in Orlando. So the Dynamics Summit, right? Basically in the, when the, in the Jeep hug track. Um, mm -hmm. So she was in the room with us. We had a huge, I don't know, we had over 100 people in there. It seemed like it was great. And she spoke with such passion. Remember that, Mary? She was so, mm -hmm. and we can send you a recording of this if you want to, but she was so excited to tell us this story. Um, uh, you know, increased productivity by over 50%. Um, she literally, she sent us an email. I'm not kidding. I think it was day one. 
She said, we've mm -hmm. eliminated five steps from our process. We just identified them, right? Um, she got very, very excited about this, almost and that you know reduced paper utilization to under 12%. They have practically eliminated using paper in, the, you know, in, in accounting. They're just about done with that. Um, and uh, the AP team was amazed in just one day. Very factual <laughs> study done there, by the way, on that one. But they were. She was like, she was waiting for them to like raise their hand, right, when they went sure. live, because she was in the room looking over these people. Um, uh, and they have about they had a group of about seven or eight people because they have over ten thousand invoices a month. Um, she said, but it wasn't. It was quiet. It was still. They were happy. At lunch, they were all giddy about, oh my gosh, can you believe how easy that was? And so, um, it's a good story. But you know, you were. And that last screen, Mary, you were talking, you know, people might look at that and go, oh, you know, 10,000 invoices a month. I don't have that much. I don't need AP. I've been doing this again for almost nine years. The most common number I hear is 500. If mm -hmm. you have one person doing about 500 invoices a month, that seems to be the breaking point in most organizations where you see that, that person says, I need help. Right. So you start mm -hmm. thinking about hiring another person or switching people's duties around and stuff. So and most of our clients end up really a thousand is about the most common thing we see from people that actually buy quick tech. So I don't want you to think that you need to. Oh, I don't have enough. You know, if it's inefficient and causing problems, then, mm -hmm. yeah, you should be thinking about you know improving that process with quick tag. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And now they're and just they're, added expense recently, yeah? yeah? they're added mm -hmm. expense. So here we are telling the whole story about invoices. We don't even talk about invoices today, but they have already purchased quick expense, Creative Solutions has, and they're mm -hmm. in the middle of their project right now. So mm -hmm. yeah, Awesome. Yeah, awesome. Very, Thanks for sharing yeah. that. Yep. And, and there's other areas in the business. We've touched on this through the course of the demonstration as well, right? Accounts payable, expense management, often where people start because those are the greatest pain points. But as you showed, Sean, in the demonstration, there's other, we could create other sites and other drawers and customers can do that for themselves. No extra cost, right? Just add licenses as needed for users. But, um, but it comes with the system for anything they want to add, human resources, onboarding, vendors, employees, whatever. So any document, any department, any process. I want you to think that QuickTag um, can help you there and we're happy to show you that in a, in a subsequent session or an offline demo if you'd like. Um, what's also important is that there's other technology integrations. As you're considering solutions, you want to make sure that the system that you're purchasing and implementing plays nice with the other systems in your environment. So we integrate with several of them. I just highlight a few here, SalesPad, Binary Stream, Solver, and the like. So if you're, that's a concern for you, certainly let's talk about it as you are exploring your options as well. And I share this, you know, what I like to call the family snapshot. And Sean, you've mentioned uh, Creative Solutions, of course, and there's some other um, customers here that I know you're very, very proud of as well in your, from your hometown. <laughs> Two of my clients, yeah, uh, and a couple current world champions. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so the St. Louis Blues, which is my hometown, St. Louis. So the current Stanley Cup champions are quick tag users, as are the uh, Super Bowl champ, Kansas City Chiefs. So, um, yeah, we like to brag about that, at least for now. But uh, it really, I mean, people ask me this, right? It doesn't matter. If you got paper and you got processes, mm -hmm. which we all do, then if it's slowing you down, it's inefficient, you need to take a look at it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what's great about that, Sean, is that these companies, much like those that are joining us on the phone today, started with the same challenge, right? Maybe they did just need to get rid of the paper to begin that process and then looked at automation as a phase two or phase three even, and that's okay. You can break quick tag into the modules that are most applicable and most necessary for your business and based on where you are in that sort of digital transformation. So um, we've been doing this a long time, 23 years or so. As Sean mentioned, we're very extensively embedded into Microsoft Dynamics and we have lots of customers who are happy to share their story around the globe and we're 100% supported right here in Tempe, Arizona, which is, is really great for our team to be very connected um, and have the visibility into your view and your issues as we as we help you get started and as we help you move towards success of digital transformation. So I do realize we're down to just a minute or two. Ali, do we have any questions that have come in here as we have the, the closing Q&A slide? Um, let me see here. Nope, it no looks questions. like we are all set. There are no questions. Excellent, excellent. Sean, we, we managed to fill 100% of the time, hopefully with what you all will consider, you know, really helpful um, use cases, benchmarks, industry data, and then of course, demonstration of quick expense and the quick tag document management platform. Allie, thank you so much for hosting us. Thanks to everybody for attending. I'll turn it back over to you. 
Thank you so much, Mary. Um, like I said, you guys, this is being recorded. I'll send it out to you. So if you do come up with any questions, feel free to ask me then. And thank you so much, Mary and Sean, for joining us today. And I hope everybody has a great rest of your week.